This video is how to make a timer in App Inventor. Okay, so to make a timer we need to have somewhere for it to go. So I'm going to stick a label on the screen. I'm going to make it big. Um, yeah, that'll be big enough. Okay, we're going to start. This works the same if we're trying to do it count down or a count up. Uh, we then need to have some way of tracking time. So to do that, we're going to need a clock. Clock is in the sensors section. Drag it onto the screen. It's non-visible, so it's going to pop down to this bottom section here. Okay, that's very important. You're going to use the clock, but you can't see the clock. You have to do the C bit yourself. Um, so clock one, the properties, we should have a timer interval of 1,000. That's 1,000 milliseconds. Okay. So then we go to, uh, actually, I'm going to add in a button that allows us to start it because um, if we don't have a start button, then it's just going to run out from the moment the, the page start timer, from the moment the page is opened. So now we can have something happen when the button gets clicked. So I'm going to go to blocks. Now I want the button to be clicked. When the button is clicked uh, and I need the clock, when the clock timer happens, right, and I need what's called a variable. A variable is uh, like a little piece of named memory inside the computer. I want to call this timer and I want it to store that number 30. Right. I also need to do something with this label. I'm going to set the label text. Okay, so these are all the bits that I need to happen. So when the uh, timer ticks away, I want the timer number to go down. And then I want the label to be updated on the screen. So I can do that. I want to set this variable timer and I want to set it to its own value minus one. So we need some maths in there and we need a number. Okay, so this is our number sentence. When the clock is t uh, when the clock ticks, find out what the timer is, take away one, and stick it back in the thing called timer, and then we're going to update the label to be that value. So set the label text to what the new timer value is. We've got to click those together. Timer. So this is going to work. The problem is that it's going to work from the moment the timer starts, which is when the page starts. Okay, so we want to have some way of managing that this clock timer only only changes the label in a couple of uh, when a couple of things are true. So we only want it to change the label when the button is clicked. The clock will still fire. The num the ticking is still happening in the background, but we're not going to see anything unless they've clicked the start button. That's kind of the best way to think about this. The other thing is that the way this works at the moment, once it gets to zero, it just keeps on going. It goes forever. So there's going to be minus numbers on your screen and that's not pretty. So um, we need to just change this in two ways to make the button work and to make the timer stop at zero. And then you could even do something else when the timer gets to zero, but that's not what this tutorial is going to do. Okay, so now I need to have an if statement and I also need to have another variable. So I'm going to have another variable called start and I'm going to set it to false to start with and then I'm going to change it to true when the button is clicked. So set when the button is clicked, set start to 
true. And now we can set an if statement in here. So control if then do this. So we have two things that we want to be true. We want so that's got an and. We want both the first thing and the second thing to be true. So the first thing is that the global start is true because if it isn't true, they haven't clicked the button yet. So I'm going to do a check there. And I can just duplicate that. So if start is true, that's one of our true things. The other thing is that timer shouldn't be, uh, if it's zero, we don't want to keep going down. So we want it to be greater than zero. Um, so I need a math. Oh, oops, at the top. Okay, so this has greater than, less than in there. Be careful about your greater than and less than because it's very common to get them around the wrong way. Uh, so the crocodile chomps to the big thing. So we need a zero, greater than zero, and we can just go and get this timer that we've already used. So I can duplicate that. Whoops, grab the wrong one. There. So let me shrink this down so you can see it properly. What happens when this screen starts? It sets two variables. It sets the timer to 30. If you change that to 60, it's going to change, do everything the same. It's just going to start from 60. If you change it to 120, you can do anything you like there. Then it's going to set the starting, whether it starts counting down to false. When the button is clicked, it's going to set the start to start to be true. And every tick of the clock, if the start is true and the timer is still greater than zero, then it will take one away from the timer and update the label on the screen. And if we go back to the designer, that's this label here that will change from 30 to whatever. Now, we could make that say anything we like there because we're doing all of the value in here, but it's just easier to understand if you leave it at 30 there. Okay, and that's how to do a timer.